Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we've got two middle linebackers who will be looking to lead their defenses to victory. It's Johnson's Chiefs going up against Cushing's Texans. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with the Kansas City Chiefs. And hi again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and you know, Charles, as we count out a kickoff here, normally we look at quarterbacks or running backs in the open. We had a look a second ago at the linebacker comparison, and you think it's well justified. I love it because they're the guys who control the game from the middle on defense. They're the signal callers. They're also the guys that you count on stuffing the run game with great tackling, but they have to be agile in today's football, being able to drop into coverage or even cover running backs in man-to-man. -man. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. The former national champion at Clemson bringing them onto the field, and that's the signal caller, Deshaun Watson. Played for a national championship, won a national championship his last two years at Clemson. He was drafted for a specific purpose by the Houston Texans, to get them deeper into the playoffs and possibly to a Super Bowl. That's why they moved up to number 12 in the draft to select this guy out of Clemson. They go play action here on first down. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. That goes for a gain of 31. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. If you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed and the agility. So good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact, and he'll go deep. carry for Lamar Miller and he gets this inside the 35 yard line 10 yards there good enough for a Texan first down well one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line if they keep clearing holes like that it could be a long night defensively no doubt about it because when they are in sync as we're seeing so far when that continuity is there and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. They keep it with Miller on first down. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. And let's take a look at the Texans' offense. With DeAndre Hopkins, I think anyone who's calling plays for him has zero limitations. And what I mean by that is he's a guy who can move outside, you can move him inside, play him on the left side, on the right side. It doesn't matter. Some guys, they have to have the ball in a certain spot, not Hopkins. Long, short, intermediate, he just wants the football. And then after that, he usually does some pretty good damage with run after catch. Watson hands to Miller on the draw. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. 
And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Defensively, there's a lineup for Kansas City, and if you want to talk about somebody through three weeks, I guess you could pick a couple guys, but Chris Jones is really paying dividends for them, isn't he? Certainly is. Yeah. Second-round pick last year out of Mississippi State. They thought he had star potential when they drafted him, and right now he's replacing the Pro Bowl production that Don Terry Poe gave them before he went to Atlanta. He mentioned AFC Defensive Player of the Week for Week 2 performance against the Philadelphia Eagles. Three sacks, two forced fumbles, an interception, and for good measure, batted away a pass. He did it all that game. Here's the rookie from Texas, Deontay Foreman. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit, and this one a 41-yard attempt. And this is no good. Close, but no cigar. Just wide right. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. Smith. And complete. This is Albert Wilson. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. Now the rookie from Toledo, this is Kareem Hunt. He's got daylight. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. A big play there. 60 yards. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Harrison Butker is on for the extra point. And his kick is good to make it 7-0 KC. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. now to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. We put our attention now on the Chiefs defense. And they got off the hook just a little bit last time with that missed field goal. The way the game is played, what you're looking for on defense are what we call empty possessions. 
no points scored whatsoever. That's the goal. At worst, you want to give up a field goal. That's when you feel like it's a win. But to run off the field with a missed field goal, no points on the board, and that's got to feel great going to the bench. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Part I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Off of play action, it's Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Here we go! Watson on third down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Benny Logan in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. So they dial up the blitz on third and inches. It pays off. And frankly, they were probably dialing up a run blitz, expecting him to run it in that situation. But instead, they end up back at the quarterback and put him on the ground. Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter to kick it away. Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. Gets past one man. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. They'll start with Hunt on the ground, and he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the gun, here's Smith. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Throwing on third down, Smith. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. 
Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. On fourth down on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. <laughs> so a change of possession here on the punt, and the Texans take possession. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Now a play fake, and it's Watson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Ten yards still left on second down. Throwing again is Watson. His throw incomplete. You know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. Come on, let's go! Get the Ryan, ah. Out of the gun, Watson. He's got it complete to Braxton Miller. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yeah. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, he came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Watson going to give this one to Miller. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Oh, now Miller slow and getting up. He's still down on the ground. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Stop, stop right Let's go. Brad, right They'll run it now out of the gun. He won't find a ton of space following the display of power as he's down just inside the 45. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. 
I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, a one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Watson on first down. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. To throw on second is Watson. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Texans on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Watson hands this to Foreman, and he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack, because remember the last drive they went three and out. So it'll be first down here after the run. Here we go. Again, it's Foreman. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Now a run. This is Alfred Blue. He'll get it to the 23-yard line. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and two. Come on, let's go. They go again with Blue. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? you got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. A long drive here, play 12 coming up for the offense. Here's Watson, option left, stepping up, he'll try and run. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Deshaun Watson, a 21-yard touchdown run. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. 
So a design run all the way, and he took it the distance. I don't know that anybody saw that come. Well, on this play, how about the vision of it, being able to see the open field, make his move, and get there. Oftentimes, defenses have a spy for the quarterback position to try and take care of it. On that play, if they did, it certainly He's didn't lost. work. lost. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Now the extra point try forthcoming. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, the spin. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And out come the Chiefs now. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Now Smith, blitz coming and down he goes. J.J. Watt in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. Throw on second down to Smith. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. the gun Smith he's gonna leave this for his running back it's complete and they'll take him down at the 31 yard line they'll wind up with 17 on that one but they're still a bit short here for fourth one quarter in the books here on a Thursday night seven all is the score we'll return after this message you're watching the NFL and it's right here on EA Sports The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you and you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden as the Chiefs in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. Here's Dustin Colquitt now as he'll punt it away for the second time. The 
This is taken at about the 14. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Texans set to come onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Making the give. Now Watson. Hopkins on the grab over the middle. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. Normally when I talk about DeAndre Hopkins, I'm talking about accomplishments. In this case, I'm remembering that he lost nearly 600 yards in receiving. In two, from 2015. He had less than 1,000 last year. Yeah, and his touchdowns dropped from 11 to 4, so now he's hoping for more consistent quarterback play. A first down carry now for Miller. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. So nothing there that time. And maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't. And you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Again, it's Miller. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Texans on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time they face a third and two. Here we go. Right on the They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. He finds his target, Fuller. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. his way forward here for a good little game. Gets a pick up of four and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Let's go! On second down, here's Watson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hopkins. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. zone down. Watson over the middle and it's incomplete. And on second and ten now. Here we go. 
Watson now. Going to throw again. This will be caught at about the six. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the five at the four. Texans passing game in rhythm right now. Picking up another first. To the air yet again, Watson under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight, Justin Houston. Coming in hard on the blitz, he gets him down for a loss of four. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. On second down, here's Miller. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. A nice run there as he picks up six. It's going to be third and goal now. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, Something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Less than an extra point attempt here. This is an 18-yarder. And his kick is indeed good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run out of. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Chiefs now getting set to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. To begin the drive, here's a handoff to Hunt. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. On second down, here's Smith. That one caught by Tyreek Hill. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A gain of 32 that time. 
Tyreek Hill, he had the two fastest plays in the NFL last year. One on a kick return, one on a punt return, topping out at 23.24 miles per hour. That's advanced analytics right there. Our guy Marvin, you know what he said? <laughs> He's really fast. his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment the defense. So they jumped on the left side Just of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play and now they're faced with a third and one. And when you don't pick up the necessary yardage in that situation, sometimes it starts to put a little doubt in the play caller's mind about what he's going to run on the next play because most of them, they thought they were going to pick it up right then and there. Now they've got to adjust what they're doing, adjust what they're thinking, and maybe they go away from what they originally thought. To throw with Smith, they'll leave it for Hunt complete. And they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. Beating the play clock. Smith throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Tyreek Hill that time. And it's second down. Second down now after the incompletion. To throw again. Smith. Caught here by Conley. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Chiefs on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Smith throwing again. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. Smith going to leave it to Hunt on the draw. 
A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Partner, you know I'm always going to listen to you first, okay? But when I hear the PA guy say, tackle in the backfield by Clowney, my first thought is to go back to his days at South Carolina and that one particular hit <laughs> in the bowl game against Michigan. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. This one maybe not as big as that, but my mind goes there as well. Yeah, but he's a talented individual because you can use him in so many different ways. Obviously a defensive end. He can play stand-up outside linebacker. And in nickel and sub situations, rush him inside against offensive guards. He's usually too quick for him. Offense. So that one will be accepted. so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, forget about finding a the lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. And facing a very tough third and 19 here after both of those running plays went backwards. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Houston after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. A shotgun snap for Smith. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Now the Texans are going to stop it as a signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So on fourth down, Andy Reid decides to send in the field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Butker able to put this one through. And that will knot us up at 10. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. And we roll tape now on his solid performance. And what we've been seeing so far is a great combination of finesse and aggressiveness in running his routes and making plays. That's what you want in any type of a receiver. The guy knows exactly what to do on a given play and ends up making the plays that help your team win. Let's go! 
Now a first down throw. Watson. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Second down now after the pass completion. A shotgun snap for Watson. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The offense on third down tonight, they've had good success. Five for eight to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Here's Watson. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. Smith. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it, because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Screen here to Hunt. Nifty footwork at the 45. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On 
first down at Smith. It's Hill complete. And he will take it on in for a Chiefs touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 36 yards. And the Chiefs have broken our tie as they take the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Butker on for the PAT. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. now to kick this one away. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up, get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretary lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. and 10. Watson. Caught left side Hopkins. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Come on, let's go. One, nine, on first down, Watson. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guy's playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? Here we go! Back to the air, Watson on second down. Dumps it complete to Miller. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. The Texans on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and four. Come on, let's go! Watson looks to throw again. Throw left side complete. That's Griffin. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. On 
first down, it's Watson. It's complete to Fuller. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This will be from 56 yards out. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. The final shot here before break. Smith, he's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Chiefs on top. As we send you on over to Orlando, where we'll check in with Larry Redley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being Skip. As we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Texans haven't played their best football and trailed because of it. The Chiefs have come in and looked good as the road team. And will just keep trying to play hard and maintain the lead going forward. Here we go, let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. We go now late in the first. Watson's gonna bust out into open space, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Texans tied up at seven. Now first and 10, Hills wide open here on the catch, and he caps off the two-play drive with a score. The Chiefs up by a touchdown. First and 10, Hopkins is by himself here, and he ends up with their own 36-yard line before he stopped on the play. Score stays the same, though, as they miss the field goal. So that's it for us. We'll go back now to Houston for the start of the second half. Thank you, LR. Appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. On first down, Smith. 
Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Harris. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Here's Smith now on second down. He's got the hookup with Conley. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Smith and it's caught over the middle Wilson and he'll go down right around the 47 this time personal foul face mask defense so they will accept the penalty and move forward So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. On first and 10, Smith. Harris has it over the middle. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Smith with a give to Hunt, and he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. That's a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. This is Chark Hendrick West. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On the ground, it's West again. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, 
you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now Smith, and it's complete to Kelsey. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Now Kansas City first, Smith fighting his fellow pro bowler, Kelsey. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Smith going to give this one to Hunt. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. They stay on the ground again. It's Hunt and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play and they're left with a third and eight. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them cold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a <laughs> big time play there. In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Now it's Smith. And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. And the Texans scoop it. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. All I know, partners, that with every play call that came in, there was a little discussion about, hey, we can seal this bad boy. We can really put ourselves in a great spot to take total control. And yet, they find a way to cough it up. Yeah, the two-score game opportunity eludes them, and now a chance for the other side to come back here. Yeah, that means defense has to go out there and make some plays themselves. So we call sudden change. Let's see if the defense is mentally ready to take care of it. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Following the fumble recovery, Watson. He sets to fire deep. Trying to force it to Hopkins, and it's intercepted. Snags it for the pick, and he'll bring this one back to the 29. Maybe he telegraphed it a little bit right there. You've got a cornerback knowing that he's going against a rookie quarterback. He stepped in and picked it. You think he had a great week of preparation, looking forward to this opportunity? And the second part of that is, when you're a young quarterback, you are going to stare down targets. But oftentimes, your playbook hasn't expanded to give you full field reads as well. Makes it a little bit tougher for him. Alex Smith and company heading back out there now. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged, mm -hmm. how big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. They'll begin the drive with Hunt. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play. Be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front. Great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely. Kept him to just a one yard gain. To throw on second down is Smith. He's going to go deep for Conley. 
And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on, third down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. The Chiefs on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and nine. Throwing on third down, Smith. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. J.J. Watt in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Kansas City. Fielded just inside the 20. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Griffin's got it, middle of the field. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Here we go. One, nine. Now it's Miller. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40 yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Fresh set of downs here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it again with Miller. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Second down following the run. They'll fake the handoff. Now Watson. Throw left side complete. That's Griffin. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That catch good for five. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Texans on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. Here it's third and two. Here we go. Brand 38. Cut. Now it's Watson, the bootleg. And this is going to be incomplete.
Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Alex Smith and the offense heading out for their next possession. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side. You know, and in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Now Smith on first and ten. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Okay, let's get a shout out real quick in here while we got a second. Jake Elliott, rookie, Memphis, 61 yard field goal to lift the Eagles to victory. Man, that was impressive. How about that? Only his second game with the Eagles. He'd been drafted by Cincinnati and was actually on their practice squad. Caleb Sturgis gets hurt for the Eagles. They take Elliott off the practice squad late in the week, uh, right before uh, week two, the week two game at Kansas City. He shows up, and I asked the special teams coach, I said, well, what do you tell him? What do you talk to him? He said, I don't do anything. I just stay out of the way, let him kick and ascertain from there. Looks like that strategy paid off really well for the Eagles with that 61-yard game winner in week three. Meanwhile, all the Giants fans just turned off their gaming systems. <laughs> So the offense has it first and 10. On the run, this is Hunt. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game. No game. Back to throw, Smith. To the right side, it's Kelsey. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. Smith on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I have to say that was a surprise call on third and inches. I thought they'd try and run the football there, but you got to believe they thought they'd surprise the defense and pick up something downfield, but that one goes incomplete. Here's Dustin Colquitt now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, where the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They begin with a run by Miller. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. 
Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Call it a gain of two as time has run out on this third quarter of play. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston, it's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. The Texans on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and nine. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. Pass the 20. 10. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins taking it in. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers. That meant fly route, go. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. A critical extra point attempt here. And an important one that is as we are tied now early in this fourth quarter. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. To return, here's Chris Conley. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll toss it to Hunt, looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. 
Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Throwing is Smith. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. And he was trying to get it to Tyreek Hill that time. And now it's third down. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Smith to throw on third down. Caught, Kelsey, left side. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. And now he's inching closer to a 200-yard game. He's been so solid. And he's really denting the pride of the guys playing defense, too, because there's certain barriers that you just don't want to give up. You never want to give up a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver. He's closing in on 200 yards? Wow, that's a really big game. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Oh, let's go. Let's go. They go play action here on first down. Going deep for Hopkins. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Texans have broken the tie. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through. All the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. Point after here coming up. take a seven-point lead now. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Smith on first down. They'll leave it for Hunt. Complete. 
And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll run it here with Hunt. No, oh, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. And the Texans scoop it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them pass it, has it? I mean, they've they dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback and the passer. Sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap, every hole that might be created in the running game, and they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there. Took away the gaps, took away the holes, took away the football. And a look now at Lamar Miller. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. Let's go! Miller. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas... It's real hard to put it back on and mash it because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think he may want to keep them cranking high right here. They were trying to get the connection with a former Buckeye, Braxton Miller, and it's third and five. Third down and five. A shotgun snap for Watson, and that is incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out now the Chiefs offensive unit ready to do battle again. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> First down, it's Smith. 
They'll go screen here to Hunt. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. On second down, here's Smith. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. The Chiefs on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. From the gun, here's Smith. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll show the defense. Here's Smith. It's Kelsey on the ground. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That goes for a Chiefs first down, 14 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. He's got the hookup with Conley. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. 23 yards on the play. And now a first down following that long gain. Throwing again is Smith. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. I remember Coach told me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Throwing again. Smith, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden, it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying, no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Smith throwing again. Oh, he 
can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. If it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And the kick by Butker is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And we have seen a lot on the scoreboard here in this quarter. So you know, you, sometimes you talk to me about tendency breakers on offense. These defenses struggling. Are there tendency breakers on defense? All defensive coordinators keep something in their hip pocket for these types of situations. What can we do to slow down the onslaught? But the biggest thing is make sure these guys encourage each other, pick themselves up, because right now, it's been a really tough ball game trying to stop these offenses. Oh, it really has, especially as of late. Now Miller, he's had a big workload here tonight. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. To throw is Watson, and his throw here is incomplete. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Gun, Watson. And he's got Miller. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. fake here on first down looking left side and he's got a man it's fuller and he'll get it out to midfield looks like yeah they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. so they complete the pass and now they face a second down From the 50, it's Watson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller. And it's third and short. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. They'll try to run for it with Miller. 
And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. First and ten, Watson. He gets this one to Bruce Ellington. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Three yards remaining here on second down. Watson. And this is incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Watson now going to run the option right. He may try and run for this. <laughs> and he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. That time they pick up a 24 yards on the keeper. First down. He's been pretty good with his legs in this game. A really nice game there. Defensively, they've been okay covering downfield, but you got to count for the quarterback, right? Yeah, and that's the hardest part because normally when you play 11-on-11, 11 11, it's truly not 11-on-11. 11 11. Defensively, you don't account for the quarterback in the run game. You account for everyone else and hope that you can catch him before he gets to the first down marker. But as you notice, he's been doing it a little bit. This time he saved his best for this run. And saving one of his best for the fourth quarter. Let's go! One, nine. Now a first down throw, Watson. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. DeAndre Hopkins finishing strong with three fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Texans will extend their lead. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. And the lead is up to 14. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays, and the result, a Houston touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Kareem Hunt and the rest of the offense making their way back out there. And the numbers for him, pretty solid, really. He's run it well. He's caught it pretty well. But they're still far behind the eight ball on the scoreboard. Not able to use his talents, as you noted, to narrow the gap in the scoreboard. Sometimes it's a bend but don't break, right? He gets his yardage. That's cool. But it's not paying off 
on the scoreboard. They're not getting the points necessary. And if you're a defensive team, you give up that yardage for the kind of lead they have. That's what I was going to ask you. Sometimes you say, let this guy do his thing. Let's control what we can control elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. Take away the rest of the guys. Don't let them hurt you as well. But the biggest one is they contained him well enough. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Brandon Dunn busting through to get him for a loss of six. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Here's Smith now on second down. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. The speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing on third down, Smith. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Two big plays in succession, and Kansas City's on the move. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Smith. He's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Call it a gain of five. And that'll make it second down. To the air again, Smith. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. The Chiefs have got the passing game rolling a bit. And another first down. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Now you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Smith. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Space to run past the 20. And he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. From the red zone now, Smith. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Butker now to add the extra point. Thank you. 
And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. So this drive spans seven plays, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting pay dirt. So a seven-point game, they'll need a recovery, the touchdown, and an extra point to tie. Down the numbers, there he goes! A tough one there, they certainly wanted that one, they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it, they still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right, they had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. Well, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so Switch we don't have to cover him anymore because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know that mid-game trade is going to happen, but good thought. They'll run with Miller. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Now here's a defensive timeout called by the Chiefs. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Lamar Miller. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. And the Chiefs are going to signal for and be granted another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Third down now following the run. Now it's Watson. It finds his target, Fuller. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll.
down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. A great come from behind victory in this one, Charles. And really the difference, obviously, was that fourth quarter. They dominated. And it has to start with believing that you can make that comeback. Because we've been in games before. We've done games where you just look at one team and realize they have no chance of making it back. Not in the one we just saw here. They did it, and they did it well. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.